It's funny, you don't have to go to the cinema to see the wildest plot twists. Life is the best script writer there is. So today, I'm going to tell you the craziest stories that ever happened in real life. But pay attention, because one of them is not what it seems. Jack the Baboon The 19th century was pretty tough for a lot of people, and signalman James White was one of them. He worked for the Cape Town Port Elizabeth Railway Service, and was often called the Jumper, since he always used to jump between rail cars. But one day, this habit bit him back. He fell and lost both of his legs. After this scary incident, he decided that he needed an assistant and got a baboon, whom he later named Jack, to get the job done. What? You think the baboon can't do it? Well, the joke's on you because Jack worked at the station for nine years and never made a single mistake. The railway even employed him officially, paying the baboon about 20 cents a day. Jack's service ended in 1890, though. He died of tuberculosis. The longest performance Have you ever been to a concert that seemed like it lasted for ages? If so, don't forget to tell me whose performance it was in the comments. Well, German musicians and philosophers decided to play a musical piece for ages, literally, and chose John Cage's organ, ASLSP, for the job. They followed the composer's instructions to play it as slow as possible, and thought that 639 years would be just enough. Considering the fact that the musical piece has been played at St. Bricardi Church in Germany since 2001, it won't end until 2640. Ah, what a time to be alive! Raising Chicago Hey, if you're from Chicago, I have a very fascinating historical flashback for you. In the 19th century, Chicago was just a few feet above the Lake Michigan water level, which brought all kinds of problems. The water couldn't drain properly, so the streets constantly became a muddy mess. Creating a system for good draining was way too expensive and long, so the authorities went for the second best option – raising the whole city a couple of feet up. And even though it seems kind of impossible, the bold plan slowly started to become more and more real. It took about two decades to raise the city up. And the most exceptional thing is that Chicago's busy life never stopped. People were staying in hotels, visiting restaurants, and going to the grocery stores, all while these buildings were raised inch by inch every single day. Mind-blowing. The luckiest woman People have gone through some seriously dangerous situations, but nothing compares to what Polish-German paraglider Eva Wisniewska faced back in 2007. On Valentine's Day, Wisniewska decided to fly a little to prepare for the upcoming Paragliding World Championship, despite the not-so-great weather reports. And it turned out to be her worst decision. Eventually, Wisniewska got trapped in the updraft of two thunderstorms. No matter how much she tried to get out, she was still lifted to a height of more than 32,000 feet. Low temperature and the lack of oxygen took their toll, and Wisniewska lost consciousness. Thankfully, after some time, the paraglider started to fall, so she came around and landed successfully. Her breathtaking story moved everybody so much that ABC1 and France 5 did a whole film about it called Miracle in the Storm. Hoover, the talking seal. In 1971, a baby seal was found on the shore. As it turned out, its mother had died, so a man named George Swallow took it home and named it Hoover. Hoover grew pretty fast and spent tons of time with his dad, slowly mimicking George's accent and catchphrases. However, one day, Hoover got so big and needed so much food that Swallow couldn't keep him anymore and gave him away to the New England Aquarium. At first, Hoover was silent. He didn't say a word for five whole years. But as he began to feel more comfortable around new people and surroundings, Hoover started talking again. His golden phrases included, Hello there, and come over here. Of course, the talking seal quickly became famous and even appeared on Good Morning America. Mysterious Disappearance Back in the 20th century, something really weird happened in Australia. A couple who decided to have a picnic in the forest called the police, 
saying they had found a body in the woods. They were too afraid to go near it and waited for policemen. The police and ambulance that came soon after examined the gray-skinned and wounded body and stated that the person was still alive. A quick trip to the nearby hospital revealed a shocking discovery. About 80% of this strange human system was completely different. So the doctors had no idea how to improve the situation. As everyone was anxiously looking for ways to solve the mystery, the body simply disappeared from the locked and guarded hospital ward. Needless to say, nobody knows what really happened to this very day. Spooky. Risky Bet In 1956, a fearless American pilot, Thomas Fitzpatrick, made a bet that he could land a plane on the streets of New York. He stole a single-engine plane from the Teterboro School of Aeronautics in New Jersey and flew it all the way to New York, winning the bet. He got lucky and only received a $100 fine, as the plane's owner didn't press charges. However, just two years later, the story repeated itself. Fitzpatrick was at a bar and told the bartender all about his crazy bet. The bartender didn't believe him. So Thomas stole another plane and landed right in front of Yeshiva University. This time he got his punishment. Fitzpatrick was sentenced to six months in prison. Penguin Love In 2007, two of the cutest penguins, Grape Coon and his mate Midori, were transferred to Tobu Zoo. At this point, these lovebirds had been together for almost a decade. However, this didn't stop Midori from leaving Grape Coon for a younger penguin. This really broke Grape Coon. He isolated himself from the other penguins and started to spend less and less time interacting. That was until the zoo decided to put up a cutout of the anime character Hululu near Grape Coon's enclosure. Believe it or not, the penguin fell in love. He could spend hours looking at Hululu and tried to do everything he could to reach the cutout. Unfortunately, he was already 20 years old at the time, and his health wasn't getting any better. He died the same year, and in 2018, Tobo Zoo displayed another touching cutout. This time, Hululu wasn't alone. The illustration of Grape Coon was standing right next to her. Ah, the power of love. The Lawn Chair Flight Have you ever seen the movie Up? Well, long before it came out, one man actually went on a daring balloon adventure, sort of. Larry Walters always wanted to be a pilot but his dream would never come true because of his poor eyesight. One day, he decided to do a flight of his own. He bought 45 8-foot weather balloons, filled them with helium, and strapped himself into this lawn chair. He also took a pellet gun to shoot the balloons to go back down, a camera, a CB radio, a couple of sandwiches, and a beer. And he really did need all of that, as he managed to climb all the way up to 16,000 feet he spent about 45 minutes in the sky, shooting several balloons. But as he went down, the balloon's cables got caught in a power line, causing a 20-minute blackout. Luckily, Walters landed safely after all. His crazy adventure was awarded the At-Risk Survivor title in the famous Darwin Awards and sparked a new kind of sport called cluster ballooning. Rabbit Pregnancy Back in 1726, England had one of the biggest controversies of its long history. A young woman named Mary Toft gave birth to something that looked a lot like several animal parts. She sent them to Dr. John Howard. He didn't believe her at first, but then she showed him other animal bits from her birth experience – some of them looked a lot like rabbit pieces – and he decided to look into this strange case. Mary's story quickly became extremely popular so popular that the British royal family sent their own investigator to find out what's going on. After tons of investigations and examinations, and a couple more rabbit deliveries from Mary, the truth finally came out. Mary's scary and mysterious story was nothing more than a hoax. Apparently, her husband Joshua simply bought young rabbits and helped his wife fool the world. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to know how these two came up with this wild idea. So, remember what I said at the beginning? Yep, now's your turn to determine which of these stories is actually fake. Yep, let me know down in the comments. 
If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go anywhere just yet! We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life!